Hello everyone, it's day seven, our final day of me trying out a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop computer. And um, for this final day, we have decided to go with using Lubuntu. Yes, this time we did install it a little bit differently. So there's no official release yet of Lubuntu 2004 as a Raspberry Pi 4 image, but what there is is Ubuntu Server 2004. But notice Martin Winpress had put together a script called Desktopify, which allows you to install any of the Ubuntu derivatives into Ubuntu Server, and it builds a lot of the configurations up for the Pi 4. And Martin Winpress is the project manager for Ubuntu Mate, and I have to say Ubuntu Mate is one of the Ubuntu derivatives that does work very well on the Pi 4. I wish I had found out about this script first because I think it would have made the performance of Ubuntu Mate a lot better. But I tried it out with Kubuntu and that did work really well. And that performance improvement has allowed us to do a recording from the webcam and desktop recorder at the same time. So, hello, this was us on Miss Quid's computer. Hello. It sounds ridiculous to think that it would be so complicated, but actually up until this point we've had no workable answer to this. Uh, we, we've had it from degrees of the webcam not working at all, or to doing less than one frame a second, to actually then be able to do 30 frames a second, but no capturing, and right the way up to now 20 frames a second with capturing. So that's a performance improvement. So what do you think of Lubuntu so far? Um, I would say that it's a definite improvement over the others that I've had a chance to try in terms of the general performance. Mm -hmm. um, I've had no issues with being able to open multiple programs at once. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some other positives that will come to in this video, but yes, essentially, I'd say this is the best choice that we've seen. So it's uh, kind of nice to end the week on a high. <laughs> yeah, it is indeed. Although there was an issue setting up the locale settings. Now, I believe this is attributed to the fact that these are just images made off the specific operating system with no installer. So it just runs with the default American keyboard, UTC time zone. But what effort did it take to correct it in Lubuntu? As this took more effort than any of the other OSs that I'd tried. Um, this required opening up three different configuration panels. The first one was the locale configuration in order to say, yes, I'm in the United Kingdom, use British English. And then I had to open up the, the keyboard layout to say that I wanted the British English keyboard layout. And then again, opening up the time because Although it had picked up the fact that we we are in the UK, it hadn't applied British summertime. So the fact that, you know, for summertime we're an hour forward. So it hadn't picked that up strangely. So we had to go into the world clock and then add Europe, London, <laughs> all three of those things. I mean, granted, you only have to do those three things once, but it's quite a lot of different like locations to make the changes to the settings. Lubuntu uses the LXQ desktop. So this is the Qt toolkit, which KDE applications use as well. So that effectively allows us to use the KDE applications natively in LXQ and Lubuntu. Although I have to say the launcher was more responsive in the Raspberry Pi 4 with LXQ versus KDE Plasma. Although it's not quite as feature rich. Although you have a search option here, it's just the search option for the applications it doesn't search for documents as well, like KD Plasma does. And searching for file this time actually opened the file manager. But bit of a bugbear of yours with Ubuntu Mate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a PC Man FM file manager this time. So yeah, that opened perfectly fine there in the search. And you've got features like pressing F4 to open a terminal in the current folder that you're navigating to or looking at on the screen. Although it's not quite as feature rich as Dolphin on KD Plasma, but yeah, you've got the option there, searching for files, and you can middle click on a folder to open it in another tab. So more feature rich than Windows Explorer. Mm. And yeah, responsiveness and navigation here was perfectly fine, and we've even got the thumbnails for the videos. So opening up the system monitor, well, I've installed KSysGuard from the KDE apps. Well, yeah, CPU usage is very high here because of the desktop recording. Not 100%, so we've got a little bit of room to spare here. Uh, memory usage, well, 
making use of the 8 gig of RAM here, although it doesn't really make use of the whole lot. We've opened quite a lot of things here, but uh, it generally seems to manage the memory quite well. Yeah, that just shows it here with the process list. Ordering under CPU, yeah, we've got 60% of CPU for the simple screen recorder, 18, 17, 18 for Xorg and Casey Scarlet itself even takes a bit of CPU as well. In terms of the different kinds of applications that are offered by Lubuntu, so under accessories, we have a few different options. We have Featherpad for basic text editing, as well as Vim. Uh, we have Compton as well, which is the compositor, which is the same as Ubuntu Mate, we believe. For education, there's just LibreOffice Math, which means that we don't have the wide variety of education-related applications that we had in Raspberry OS. For games, there was one game that came pre-installed, and that was 2048. Um, I don't actually know how to play that game, so I installed Mines as well, so K-Mines. In terms of internet, the browser that comes installed is Firefox. We have Chromium Media Edition and Vivaldi there in as experiments into trying to get DRM content working. This was my attempt to look at the DRM issues today. Uh, this blog does mention about how to solve it with Raspberry Pi OS but it does not work for Ubuntu or Debian. I wondered if this was because Chromium is installed as a snap package in Ubuntu, so I tried to get hold of a dev package, but just it ended up in dependency nightmare. I did try as well with Vivaldi, but it just got to the point of me saying, well, this is so much easier under Linux x86 and Windows, and just for in the towel, it was taking far too long. For Office, we have a partial suite of LibreOffice programs. For sound and video, we have VLC Media Player. We've also installed Simple Screen Recorder to do our recording. For system tools, we have the kind of tools that you would expect. We do actually have HTOP, but we decided to go with K Syscard for the system monitoring. And then under preferences, we have all the different options in order to customize Ubuntu, including the settings, which gives us a lot of different options in itself. So if we go to the configuration center, and I'm just going to go to appearance. And I didn't actually play around with all of these different options. There are some options, maybe not as many as alternatives but there are a few things that you can play around with yeah it's not as many options as you can get under the kde plasma desktop hmm. but then this is more lightweight so hmm. yeah. decide what you want from there it's not to say this is a completely rigid desktop you can do a few things with it once again we had the configuration issue of not being able to output the sound on the three and a half millimeter headphone jack it defaults to playing the sound out through the HDMI cable, which I'm sure is fine for most systems. Unfortunately, Miss Quids has a separate speaker system like I do on my own desk. So we want to output the sound on the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. But fortunately we found this solution specifically for Ubuntu Mate, but yeah, as it turns out, it's the same solution for all the Ubuntu desktops. It's one terminal line, you only need to do it once. However, this is not as convenient as Manjaro Arm was. How have you found this week of trying a Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer? Um, so it's been quite a mixed bag going between the different operating systems. It started off quite negative, um, mm. trying to work out what is each of the operating systems actually aimed for, what kind of user is it aimed at. Um, but it did improve as the week went on and we started to find some current themes for the problems, which meant solving some of the problems was easier um, as we came up against them again. And yeah, it was nice to, as I've already said before, it was nice to find an operating system at the end, which actually um, gets the job done with not yeah. too many issues. Um, so yeah, I'd say it ended, it started negative and ended more positive. So mm. it's good. I think mean, that's fair to say, yeah. I think it was a bit of a, a limitation initially when we found that we weren't mm. able to do everything as we sort of thought we could with the ARM devices. 
Obviously, they are more cut down compared to an x86 system. Not necessarily all the programs are available. You do have to find something that's being compiled for the ARM architecture. So yeah, that was, a, yeah, disappointing start, but a better ending. Mm. I suppose the easiest one to set up was Manjaro ARM. You had the installer there in the distro. I think it looked better. Mm. Point and click on the audio. Performance-wise, not, not quite so there, is it? No. no. I think this is one where the Ubuntu distros have actually performed better. I suppose you could see the one where a lot of development has taken place is Raspberry Pi OS. I'm not so keen on the Pixel desktop. I think the Pixel desktop had its time with the older Pis with the lower memory, but now we've got the 8 gig of RAM, we kind of moved on from there, so yeah. Raspberry Pi OS with a different desktop, I could see. So the question is, can a Raspberry Pi Model 4 be used as a desktop computer? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes, it can. But should it? And I think that's where we found some of these difficulties, limitations of it. Now to say that Raspberry Pis make good devices, make good Internet of Things devices, make good devices for small computers, they can even make good servers basic servers, web servers, DNS servers. One of my Raspberry Pis downstairs is a cloud storage server. <laughs> so I make use of them. Mm. But the desktop computer. I think that was more of a substandard experience. Mm. Yeah, they can't really be compared. The experience I've had can't really be compared to having a full-blown desktop PC, although I have said that Lubuntu, my experience with Lubuntu is about as close as I have got at this point. Mm. There have been definite performance issues that we found, things that have occurred that would not have occurred in a desktop PC. Yeah. Some positives though to it, I would say, obviously it being so small, it's very portable. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you wanted, Absolutely. if you wanted one that's you know gonna get you, uh, maybe the power of a say a netbook, something for surfing the internet, plus being able to run a couple of programs at once, do some basic processing stuff, then you know this is this would be good for that. Um, and also, it's very, very quiet. <laughs> so Silent. Yeah, just you forget it's there. Mm. Um, so yeah, there are positives and negatives. Yeah, it depends. It depends really what you want out of it. Yeah, and actually one part we never looked at on this was the dual monitor output. Mm. The Pi 4 is the first mo Raspberry Pi to have dual monitors. I've got two monitors here, but you don't in your room. It's no. a bit, bit of a smaller setup than mine. So yeah, we do that's of course a nice thing. I don't know how many netbooks can do that. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, it can, it's, can be more powerful than a netbook. But I think ultimately a desktop computer, no, and, and I have to pick up something here for comparison's sake. An ITX size computer. This is a 25 watt CPU. I think the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU is, uh, I think that's about five to 15 watts, I think 15 watts power supply, but bearing in mind some of that's gonna be for the USB devices. I think it's about sort of five watts in use under full load. So yeah, this, this, this thing's like five times more power processing demand. So <laughs> how do you compare that? But you know, this computer we've done video editing on. Yeah. It's an x86 system, so we have no problems with the browser, like DRM stuff. Yeah, the the in fact the um the April Fool's Day video last year, the one where we went searching for penguins, uh, we went on a bit of a holiday uh, for the weekend and effectively took this computer with us and did the editing on that. So yeah. <laughs> it was used as a portable computer. <laughs> uh, and I think that's fair to say that. Yeah, I would rather something like that than the Raspberry Pi. Sad to say, but you know, I don't know what next generation of Raspberry Pi will bring. Yeah, it's improved this much so far, so maybe next one will be even better. And like we've said, the Raspberry Pi is very good for Internet of Things purposes, and given 
you know, com comparing it to perhaps earlier versions, you could say it's handled perhaps more processing than it could have done before. Yeah. Like you use that, use that capability for Internet of Things purposes, you know, maybe not for a desktop computer, but it'll have its place somewhere. Um, so yeah, trying try not to be all negative towards it. It didn't work for the purpose that we tested it for, but that's not to say that you wouldn't find another use for it somewhere else. No. And, and I think one of the comments I did say during the week was, was it, all memory, no CPU, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Eight gig of RAM. Honestly, I think that just seems too much for what it is. Mm. Like it didn't have the CPU to go with it. But maybe there are some server demands that would necessitate that. So, mm. who's to say? Yeah, that concludes the week of trying a Raspberry Pi as desktop computer. But thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. <laughs>